All right, folks, here we go. The Canon 90D in 2023. Now, can you actually believe it? This used to be Canon's best selling series, the double digit series from the 70D, the 80D, and now this is the 90D. But before we begin, the earlier footage you saw on the monk in the temple, that's essentially shot with the Canon 90D when it first came out in 2019. So in today's video, there will be some sample videos and photos when we're going to discuss on who is this camera for and is it worth it for you to buy in 2023 if you happen to snack them for cheap. In the video world, 1080p, what do you have? You have 24 frames per second, 25 frames per second, 50 frames per second, 60 frames per second, 30 frames per second, 100 frames per second, and if you go to NTSC, you have 120 frames per second. And this is actually one of the first few cameras to be able to shoot 1080p up to 120 frames per second. That is not the 1DX Mark II. Ironically, Canon cameras in 2019 love 720p. Even on Canon EOS R has 720p at 120 frames per second and 100 frames per second mode, this camera is one of the very first few that does not have 720p and thank God for that. Nobody shoots in 720p in 2019, hell, even 2017. Mmm, this looks to be like a delicious option for content creators. And this is probably the reason why I bought this camera. But it's not the only reason. Because moving up from 1080p into the 4K world, we have access to uncropped 4K up to 30 frames per second. Now this is huge. And this is huge because looking into cameras made way back in 2019, you have options for 4K in the 5D Mark IV, in the EOS R, even in the M50. Now these cameras all shoot in 4K but have very horrendous amount of crop to them, up to 1.7x crop factor. Now when you crop in, some people would say, man, I can't use 4K because now my lens doesn't equal to 1 to 1 readout. And I agree with those people. Having the ability to shoot both in 1080p and in 4K, but when you go into 4K, you have to mind of the crop factor that enables in 4K. That is a big no. That is not professional at all. Having to use a gear, but having to shoot at a high resolution, but at a very big compromise. No way, Canon. You gotta be joking. But this is the very first breakthrough that Canon actually have. I'm so surprised. I really am. The 4K in the 90D. When they first announced it in 2018, Big deal because it is uncropped. It is the very first attempt of Canon saying, I'm sorry, we're not going to crop in any further, just like what we did with M50. This one, we're going to go 4K uncropped. This is why I love this camera because now you could use a full readout of your EFS lens without cropping in any further. If you're using full frame, there will only be a 1.6 because this is a APS-C camera. There will not be any further crop. When I look into the footage of the 4K wall, it is astounding having to see 4K coming from a 1080 person. It's a big, big change. The details of the 4K world is so much more plentiful. There is dual pixel autofocus. Can you believe this? Back when Canon would cripple the heck out of Canon RP and the Canon M50, this now has 4K uncropped with dual pixel autofocus. This is a steal of a camera back when it first released in 2018. This is one of the main reasons also, the second main reason why I buy this camera. Heck, I can even color grade and it looks great. Now this camera only shoots in 8-bit, but it's one of the best 8-bit I've ever seen. The 8-bit art from this camera is phenomenal. I used to color grade the heck out of my footage. Here is a sample. It looks phenomenal. But aside from having no crop on your 4K, there is a crop mode for this camera. Having to crop in your 4K, they didn't say it in the menu, but running tests myself and looking through online, I highly recommend you thinking, just think, okay? Don't shoot, but think about shooting 4K crop at times. There is a big advantage to why you want to shoot 4K crop over shooting 4K uncropped. But having shoot 4K crop mode, on this camera, it's wonderful. It actually punches more details into your image. Say if you were to shoot a commercial with includes like ingredients behind the labeling and the product labels, you would want to shoot in 4K crop so that you can see all those fine wordings in full detail. This is why I love this camera. There are many ways in which I can play this camera to my advantage. If I don't want the 4K crop, if I'm shooting, say, a lifestyle portraiture of someone holding a product for an ad, I don't want that crop. I want to be able to use the full width of the sensor. Now I have access to 4K uncropped. 
Say, if I want to shoot a product video, which I don't mind stepping a little bit further away to shoot this beautiful perfume, and I want to see every single details, the wordings and everything must be great. I have access to shoot now in 4K crop. That is phenomenal, Canon. Now you're giving us so much options to play around essentially on what we filmmakers need. Okay, now that I'm done kissing ass on the 90D, what are the main problems that I face using the 90D in video mode? The first issue is into 120 frames per second, not recording in audio. There is a time, a long time ago, when I first handled the 90D. I was very curious because the autofocus seemed to work in preview mode, but it doesn't work when you hit the record, especially true when you're shooting in high frame rate mode in 1080p. There was a time when I was shooting an event, and I clearly do not know and I forgot that I set this camera into high frame rate recording mode. And one of the problems I ran across, and I spent a good 20 minutes trying to troubleshoot before I found out the answer to it after the event, is that I was basically on high frame rate recording. The autofocusing works fine on preview mode. It looks exactly the same as when you were to record in a non high frame rate mode. And I actually mix them up. So when I record my videos and when I, when I, when I hit record, the autofocusing just seems to stop. But when I stop the recording, the autofocus comes back again. And I was so curious, why is this happening to me? On top of that, I have no audio. When I, be, when I play back the footage, I look back at the audio, there's nothing there. And that should have been my hint that I was on high frame rate mode. But because I was in an event, and because I was new to the 90D, I was so unfamiliar with this. And having a few of my clips not being usable because they were one, out of focus, and two, having no audio, I died. Okay, so that's pretty much it for video. Let's move into real quick into photo mode. And into photos, this camera sports up to 11.5 frames per second in continuous burst shooting mode. And it all thanks to the Digic 8 processor. This camera is the very first few that introduces eye detect focus. And one other thing I love from this camera and coming in from the 60 Mark II up to the 90D, this camera now has a higher refresh rate on its monitor screen. So having to move the autofocusing points is so much more seamless as opposed to the 60 Mark II. Like none of the image seems tech sharp. It just seems softly focused. And I'm not a big fan of that. And there are a couple of times in which my job got hindered was because the quality that's coming out, the photo quality that's coming out of the 90D just doesn't seem to compare that of a 60 Mark II or any full frame camera. I'm not too sure if this is the issue of the lens or the issue of APS-C cameras out like that. But I would say if you're really into photography, steer clear from the 90D. Well, chances are you're not a bird photographer. Chances are you're not a Formula One racer or you don't need high frame rate shooting. I would very much less settle for a 6D or 6D Mark II for a lesser price, but with a better tech shop image. Okay, so now we're done talking about photos. Let's look into the ergonomics of this 90D. It is very similar to Canon's somewhat patented ADD series. It looks the same, it functions very well. All of the buttons are very nice and firm. Now I have mine chipped over here. Um, that's only because I've been abusing the heck out of this camera. It is a great working camera. I really do love the fact that I can switch photo and video mode here. The photo and video mode here with the C1 and C2, that's a great hack, man. Like if you haven't done this to your 90D, Stop this video right now, take your 90D out, and do this right away. This is a great hack. Having to choose in, in video mode, when you try to shoot in high frame rate mode, avoid going into the menu and clicking high frame rate mode, enable, and then bounce back into your shooting mode. You will miss so many key moments and you will not, and you will not enjoy your camera going into the menu system every time you want to bounce in and out from shooting high frame rate mode. Do this. Go into video mode, Go into high frame rate mode and move your mode dial to C1. Register your high frame rate shooting in C1 mode. Now do the same for C2, but for 24 frames per second and 4K or 1080p is up to you. Now you have access to moving your dial into C1 and it will pop right into high frame rate shooting and move back to C2 for 1080p at real time 24 frames back into normal recording mode. This is a great thing. I love using C1 and C2. I'm so proud of it. Every time I go on a wedding shoot, I'm like thinking, all right, this scene needs super slow-mo, C1. 
If this scene needs a talking hit, C2. It's so fast, so rapid. I really do love this camera. The ease of use of this camera is only due to the fact that the ergonomics are so well placed and intent that everything works so seamlessly in this camera and I really, really do love it. Now, this camera also has an audio input jack as well as an audio monitoring jack, which is something from the 6D Mark II does not have. The audio monitoring jack is so important especially when you're trying to record audio and you're trying to make sure that there is no fan or leaf blower going up behind your grandma's house. There are many options to why having to monitor audio is great. And on top of that, hey, look, it's back. The nipple, the thumbstick joy, or some would call it the nipple stick. This is phenomenal, it's great. Having to use the optical viewfinder and having to manually crank in the shutter speed here and uh, dial in like this, it's insane. It's infuriating, especially when I'm recording on the 60 Mark II, which does not have the nipple stick. Having the, <laughs> having the thumb joystick, it's insane. Moving auto focusing point is so seamless. It just helps shooting photos so much more enjoyable with the 90D. If only the image would turn out nice and tech sharp, oh man, this would be the best photo camera I would recommend. All right, so I shared with you three categories on this Canon 90D in photo, video, and in the economics. And is this camera worth it to buy in 2023? How does it stack against other cameras in 2023? Here's a side-by-side -side comparison between the Canon 90D to that of a more expensive APS-C, the mirrorless R7. And as you can see, the 4K still heads up pretty okay should you not shoot in 4K fine, which is 7K down sample on the R7. If you shoot in 4K for both side by side, you can't exactly tell the difference because they both look very, very nice. So in conclusion, the Canon 90D is a perfect sample of what every videographer can buy and can get used to if you don't want to buy mirrorless in 2023. The only reason why I can think of is because you don't want to invest in our F lenses. If you have a plenty of EF lenses, whew, this guy here will do you good. 2023 for video shooters, I highly recommend you checking out the 90D should you don't want to upgrade to mirrorless. However, I must say with a caveat is that mirrorless cameras are the future and this is going to be phased out eventually. Yes, that's true. That's 100% correct. However, reliability wise, the DSLR will always be more reliable than a mirrorless camera. There are many times when I shoot on a mirrorless camera, there are just something wonky happening behind the... Like example here, when my camera screen will just freeze up or when my screen will turn green all of a sudden. And so there are many reliability issues with Canon mirrorless cameras. So I will only assume you want to buy a DSLR is because you have had a problem or have seen problems with the Canon mirrorless cameras or you just don't want to upgrade the RF lenses, you want to keep your AF lenses. This is a great option. Reliability-wise, this will last longer than any mirrorless camera. That's a fact. Mirrorless cameras are so nice, so new, and they have many different technologies in them, but they have reliability issues from time to time. However, now, when you're trying to buy a 90D for photography, you know, be it you're a school student or be it if you're a professional that want to shoot with photography, I don't know. I don't exactly recommend the 90D for anything else except for shooting birds, shooting in high sports, football, or, or a race car track. Those are the things where the 90D excels really well because of the high frame rate shooting and the eye detect, animal detect, as well as the car detect. But I must say, it is really a lackluster for wedding shooters or for portrait shooters. The 90D does not hold up well in photo sections at all. I will highly steer clear away from the 90D if you wanna shoot in photos. So in the end of the day, here is my real world review of the Canon 90D and this is going to be a farewell to all Canon DSLRs because we are moving into the mirrorless systems. This will be the very last video I'll be making of the 90D because I'm planning on selling it as well. This has served me so well in the years of 2019 up to 2023 and I highly recommend people checking this out. But for people like me who have moved on and moved forward to greater things, there's no doubt mirrorless systems are far superior than the DSLRs. All right, so with this in mind, that pretty much wraps up this video. If you have any further questions about the Canon 90D or the R7 or any cameras at all you want me to review, let me know in the comment down section below. If you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe as I'm trying to hit 100 subs so that I can enjoy myself a great, nice vodka. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again in the next episode and stay cool.